You know, it's no surprise that CNC machinists love to talk shop with other machinists. And it's usually not very far into these conversations that we venture down the road of the most shocking things that we see in a machine shop. And we were talking about this the other day and I thought that this would be a good time to include all of you in this conversation because I know you've probably got some crazy stories of your own. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five of the most shocking things that I've seen people do in a machine shop. And if these things don't shock you and you've got a better story, then by all means, please let us know in the comments below. And coming in at number five is machining and chill. So why would you wait till you get home to watch your favorite show on Netflix when you could just watch it here at work? <laughs> I know several people that sit there all night watching movies on their phone instead of paying attention to their machine or building tools for the next job or they end up taking 30 minute bathroom breaks every single hour so they can doom scroll through Facebook instead of doing something more productive with their time like watching times of CNC videos instead of the old office reruns. Well, well, well. How the turntables the fourth most shocking thing that people do in a machine shop is play hide and seek. Now I have personally spent four hours searching for a boring bar that costed $6,000 and thinking the whole time, how can our management system be so bad that we misplace such an expensive tool? When the whole time it was locked in somebody's personal toolbox who just happened to not be there that day. Barry said, you got my tool. God. Look here, Gollum. I know your little tools are precious to you. And if you want to lock those, that's fine. But company tools don't belong locked in your box. Number three is the leisurely sloth. You know, the guy that likes to slow all the feed rates down at the machine to make the programs last longer, just so he can work a lot more overtime, or maybe he just don't want to work at all and change over parts all night. I used to work with a guy just like this that used to love to work 70, 80 hours a week, and I wrote a program for a twin spindle lathe for him that maybe had 10 or 12 minute cycle time. So I handed it off to him to make 75 pieces, and it took him three weeks working seven days a week and 12 hour shifts to make 75 parts. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that that math doesn't add up. Number two is the sticky bandits. You know, the guy that steals scrap carbide and goes and sells it at his local recycling center. Or even worse, I've seen a guy intentionally scrapping parts so they could hide the material just to later come in and sneak it out of the shop. I mean, I can understand someone like Jean Valjean stealing a loaf of bread to feed his starving family, but scrapping parts just to steal 60 cents worth of aluminum? I mean, come on, really? And the number one most shocking thing that I've ever seen someone do in a machine shop has to be the embezzling buffoon. We had a guy that was in charge of purchasing that was actually doubling all of the orders on shop equipment. So, you know, things like bosses, power tools, commercial welders, bench grinders, you know, some pretty expensive things. But the problem was we didn't know any different because we ordered one and we got one. So we didn't really think anything of it. And then this criminal mastermind has the genius idea to host a barbecue at his house and invite the owner of the shop as well as some more people that he worked with. Of course, they walk in his garage and it didn't take them long to start noticing all this brand new, very expensive equipment just lying around. And I should note that this is not the type of guy that you would see this type of equipment in his house, okay? He's not a guy that gets his hands dirty, if you know what I mean. They start putting two and two together, go back through some old invoices, and realize that about $30,000 worth of shop equipment is nowhere to be found. Until now. And the great confiscation then ensues. I guess uh, when it comes to stealing things, there's really nobody you can trust, not even yourself. So guys, that's my top five list, you know, of the craziest, 
most shocking things that I've seen in a machine shop. But now I'd like to hear from you guys. You know, what's some crazy things that you guys have seen? And maybe you can top these, I don't know. But I guess really the most shocking thing to me would be if somebody is watching Titans of CNC content and not actually subscribe to our channel. Now that's pretty shocking. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and go ahead and leave me a comment below with your own story. Anyway, I gotta get out of here.